Harrison behind the wrestler interview. Take on. Uh, what <laughs> All right, if you want to clap it, right, yeah. what was your first exposure uh, to professional wrestling? Um, from memory, I guess it went back to um, I think it was like the mid to late 1980s. I think it was like 87, 88 when um, the WWE superstars of wrestling came on uh, television here to um, great, um, I guess. Furor that came out later on because of the violence in it, but um, yeah, I can remember um, my parents, um, myself and my younger brother getting right into it. And, yeah. <laughs> we'll ignore that. Um, yeah, yeah, watching that on the TV, of course, um, collecting the um, the bubblegum cards, um, three seasons of it. Um, yeah, watching that on the TV, so yeah, watched it for a couple of years until it got pulled off the air, but um, yeah, I still remember vividly being at primary school. And um, yeah, quite a few kids um, yeah, kind of have a tendency to slap the sleeper hold on me. I remember coming home one day and telling my dad, being pretty much upset about it, and telling me, well, if you want to get out of it, just give him an elbow to the gut. And sure enough, next time, bam, <laughs> swept the elbow, and uh, yeah, that seemed to do the job. But, nice. yeah. Yeah, and all just went from there. Nice. Uh, how did you get involved with your local or closest promotion? Like um, yeah, well, I've been wanting to get into wrestling. Um, so I fast forward to about to 2008 or so, and I just finished university. I was living in uh, Mount Monganui at the time. And I saw that um, IPW had their television program on, I think it was Sky or Prime or something like that, and I watched a couple of episodes of that. And I thought, oh, okay, um, yeah, it'd be nice to get involved with it in some capacity. So I emailed them um, asking, uh, how do I get involved? But I uh, never heard back from them, oddly enough. But, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. so I did um, yeah, three years at Mount Longanui, and then I got a transfer um, to the business that I was working for to plant over in Newcastle in Australia and um, shortly after I moved there um, I saw that the local promotion um, Showtime Wrestling Alliance um, were running a show uh, locally and meant to go along to it but um, yeah, I was just knackered from moving over there so I left it to their next show um, this was in, sorry, in uh, 2010 and um, yeah, went along to the next show um, sat in the audience, thoroughly enjoyed it, and they said that they're looking for new trainees to sign up, so um, went up and spoke to the, um, the person, I think it was um, um, Maya Reynolds, who was the um, um, general manager for the promotion at the time, and uh, he had a quick chat about it, and told me to sign up. Got a call back from a guy called um, Johnny D, who was um, part owner of the promotion at the time, and he said, come on down to the... Um, yeah, well, was at the Hamilton RSL club, uh, we'll do a tryout and um, we'll go from there. So yeah, went along down there, um, got introduced to the trainers, um, what were their names? Um, Harley Wonderland and um, Adam Hoffman. Um, probably threw the paces with about three or four other guys and um, they said, yeah, you're good enough. Um, you want to sign up, come on back and um, yeah. But yeah, just to, from the get-go, um, yeah, just only wanted to do referee training, and yeah, they said, yeah, that's cool. I'm always looking for refs, so um, we'll see um, you back. You got trained at the famous Lance Storm Academy in uh, Toronto, Ontario, was it? Uh, Calgary, Alberta. Oh, Calgary, sorry, my mistake. Uh, did you go there wanting to be a wrestler yourself, or did you always aspire to do, to don the zebra stripes of a referee shirt? Um, well, by the time I went to Calgary, I'd been refereeing um, for SWA for two years, um, and it had always um, been my ambition to do refereeing the whole way through, so mm -hmm. I thought that I could have done um, wrestling. Um, but um, yeah, I guess since I was an athlete and multi-sport and long-distance running at the time, I didn't want to... Um, risk injuring myself um, in the ring, they would have forced me to pull out of races. So that's why I went for refereeing from the start. And um, yeah, going to Lance Storm was something that I was keen to do um, from 2011 onwards. I initially emailed him, he wasn't doing a formal refereeing training course at the time, but he said, come on over halfway through the wrestlers course, which was about six weeks through, and um, yeah, there'll be working matches and we'll chuck you in and you can go from there. I was keen to do it at the time, but unfortunately I just didn't have the money or kind of get the time off work as well because it was like, yeah, six weeks at the time. 
and um, yeah, just would have been hit in the pocket too hard. Mm. So um, it's like, no, nah, well, um, yeah, we'll sit on it for a year, for a year, and we'll get back to it. And um, which I did a year later, and um, by that stage, um, Lance had set up his own refereeing training course, and um, I believe myself and a young guy from Nova Scotia in Canada were um, his first official referee trainees. So um, yeah, going over to train with Lance was. Um, yeah, that was a career um, moving um, and earth shattering moment mm. for me. So it taught me from that level up to that level. Just you know, training was it three or four hours a day, five days a week over four weeks with some really, really top notch um, trainees. And yeah, I'm just so glad I got that opportunity. Nice. Now, Lightstorm was known for, of course, his catchphrase, can I be serious for a moment? <laughs> was there any hazing or punishment? By Lance, if any of the trainees no, did no, that? no, not at all. Um, Lance, um, was it Islet, Islet, or whatever his name is? His real name is completely different from Lance Storm, the wrestling mm -hmm. character. He's very down to earth, mm -hmm. quite funny. Um, uh, um, the reason why I felt I got along so well with him was that we were very similar personalities. Like he said, when we were training there, that um, yeah, around um, so like people who doesn't know, he tends to hold back, it's a little bit introverted, but around people he knows, life of the party. Mm. So um, yeah, yeah me, since I had a bit of experience under my belt as well, he recognised that and um, didn't need to ask too much of me, just the odd um, tweak here and there, especially when I first started there. You know, when I started refereeing, he pointed out a few things, made those changes, and yeah, he was yeah, very, very good as a coach, but as far as hazing and all that kind of things goes, no, nope, he, he was firm but fair yeah. as a coach, um, and yeah, by the time I got to Calgary, already three or four people had pulled out, it was a full course to start off with, um, one guy pulled out um, the, my first day there, he came in and said, Blads, sorry, we've got to pull out, and um, yeah, another week or two into it, another guy had to pull out, so um, no, he, he was a very, very good coach. Yeah. Now, you mentioned you joined the wrestlers there like six weeks into the course. Yes. And they just threw you into the, into refereeing the matches. Yep. How... Um, That's all right. Sorry, Graham. Hi, Graham. Oh. I know you're going to cut this bit out. Yeah, so this is all going to be cutting for Graham. <laughs> I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. Yeah, that's all right. Just um, cool. Oh, I had the question that was gone. Um, was it along the lines of how did I fit in? Those guys have been training for a while. Yeah, yeah, probably something like that, yeah. Okay, so I'll we'll start that again. Just because it grab my bonnet. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that you joined the other wrestlers at the Storm Academy like six weeks in. Yes. How do you think you um, fell into that mould? of them being there for that six weeks and you're the, the newbie. Yeah, it was, a, it was it was tough on two counts, as you said, well, yeah, but there's four weeks, four weeks to go, they've been training for eight weeks already, um, they've come in for the last four weeks, and yeah, they had their close-knit network together, especially those that were living together in Lance Storm's um, apartment, um, he had like a special apartment that he bought especially for the wrestlers. And um, yeah, they had their close friendly networks and were even working some shows together locally throughout Alberta. So when myself and the other wrestler, no, should I say referee trainee came in, um, yeah, we were a little bit on the outside. Um, but yeah, I got on well enough with the wrestlers, but yeah, also was kind of hindered by the fact that I stayed at a place on the other side of Calgary um, at um, Mount Royal University. So um, I had a 45 minute bike ride to get there um, each day and then 45 minutes back again. But um, yes, yeah, so a little bit tough trying to integrate into them. I didn't socialize with any of them away from training mainly because of where I was living and what my interests um, and my spare time were. Um, so, but no, otherwise, yeah, got along well. With them and um, yeah, a couple of them, um, particularly um, Nick Armstrong, who um, works um, for promotions in Adelaide. Um, yeah, still keep in touch with them every now and again. Um, yeah, yeah, WWE tryouts once or twice. So yeah, great tie up. Nice. Still going on well. Uh, you also mentioned that when you were at the academy, there was no referee training as such be created one, was it the year after or a couple of years after? Um, yeah, the year that I went there was the first year that yeah. um, Lance started running them and yeah. he actually stopped running those officially last year. Oh, do, do you think that was because 
you went there and applied to be the referee? Or? Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he said that um, he started it up because he'd had quite a few inquiries about refereeing training and yeah, it was just fortunate that he started it formally um, that year. And, you know, myself and uh, the other guy were the first ones to get in the door. So. Oh, nice. Well timed then. Very well timed. Well very blessed with that. Yeah. Um, you've refereed for... I, I assume every promotion within New Zealand? Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Count um, yeah, 10 promotions um, since I came back to New Zealand in 2012 uh, until today. So, yeah, 10 promotions. Yeah, two of those which are now closed. But, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Yes. Is, is there any matches from any promotions that stick out in your mind? Yes, absolutely. Um, the match that I still count as my, my favourite match was a two out of three falls match for the NZWPW Heavyweight Championship uh, between James Shaw and Johnny Idol and Levin. Um, that was an epic match. Ended up a um, one pinfall each draw um, after they both pinned each other and for the deciding pinfall. And yeah, that just the drama of that match. They went everywhere in, in that ring. They did everything, that, even around the crowd as well. And um, yeah. Um, the crowd was just absolutely hooked into it, and even I was absorbed in that match, not just as a referee, but as a fan mm -hmm. of the match, and um, to this day, that's still the bar for me. Oh. And yeah, out of the nearly 600 matches that I've done, yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah. That's the one. In your time, you've um, counted matches for like different match types, like your two out of threes, your singles, your tags, etc. Yep. Is there any type of match that you would or wouldn't want to be involved in? Mmm, ooh, that's a good one, that. Um, personally, um, I guess, Fatal 4 Ways can be pretty messy because even though there's not really that, as much to do as there is in a normal singles match, because um, there's no disqualifications, no count outs or anything, you do have to be on your toes and stay out of the wrestler's way. Uh, because there's a lot of action happening in the ring, especially if some are on the outside and they're coming in. It's like you've really got to be on your toes. But any particular match that I'm not particular fond of refereeing, no. No, I do enjoy um, refereeing all of them. Yeah, just, yeah, anything new, yeah, yeah. bring it on. They haven't been involved in anything too terribly violent. Um, it's been too hazardous to my health. I've done yeah, a couple of hardcore matches when there's been um, thumbtacks involved uh, luckily no barbed wire or fire yet but uh, <laughs> yeah could still happen yeah. could That's... still happen but you never know where would you like to see your referee career in five to ten years time five to ten years i think i'll still be lucky if i'm still wearing the stripes um, in that time because um yeah, me and my partner have got ideas of settling down and starting a family um in the near future but um yeah if i can still keep going um, as a referee, just yeah, the odd show every now and again, yeah, that would be great. But um, yeah, if I was still single, um, yeah, that the different story altogether. But then, given my age, I'm uh, 36 years old now, and um, yeah, any possibility of me working for the likes of uh, the WWE or New Japan Pro Wrestling is pretty much long since sailed. Um, if I wanted that, I need to have started about 10 years earlier, which one of my few regrets in life. But hey. What can you do? Um, but yeah, 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 five to ten years, yeah, if I'm still wearing the stripes, still ticking away, I'm still holding my own as I am now, then I'll be pretty happy with that. Nice. Yeah. So, Chris, what what made you come back to New Zealand yeah, well, for refereeing? Yeah, I've been in Australia for um, nearly two years, and um, yeah, just things are just starting to add up, really. It's... Um, yeah, about four reasons I counted. One, um, I wasn't too happy in the job that I had at the time. Um, just I was working for a mining explosives company at the time and um, while there's the fun of going into the field and blowing stuff up in the name of um, health and safety, there was a hell of a lot of red tape involved and um, there's a lot of time sitting at my desk typing up um, health and safety um, risk assessments and um, waiting for fabricators to get back to you with um, their progress on making things up that I need for these um, field tests and a lot of coordination. And yeah, it's just 
sitting around thinking, is it really all worth it? So yeah, that was the first reason. Um, second reason was uh, the promotion I was working for at the time, um, SWA, was uh, really coming apart at the seams. Um, the guy um, who owned it, Johnny D, he was looking to offload the company because it was um, playing havoc with him financially and with his marriage as well. And the guys that were um, booking the shows at the time were really starting to produce bloated cards that would go from about six matches a show we were having nine to ten matches that would go for about three hours and yeah since I was pretty much in charge of the ring crew at the time we wouldn't be finishing um, unloading until after midnight which was um, yeah and being unpaid work as well and that was like 14, 15 hour days and yeah that's part of the reason why I call myself the Iron Man because of the hours that I put in for SWA, it was really, really starting to uh, grind me down. Um, third reason was that um, yeah, I had all my family um, back here in New Zealand. Um, it was a solid 12-hour um, day traveling from Newcastle um, just to get back and visit them. And it was um, during a trip back in May of 2012 for my grandmother's 90th birthday. It was kind of an unofficial family reunion of sorts. All my Cousins and aunties and uncles came all around the country to um, celebrate it for us. So, um, yeah, just having them all back here is, uh, yeah, yeah, the time's about right to come back. And then the fourth reason, yeah, just the job came up at just the right time. The job they have now with GNS Science down in Taupo. I was like, okay, yep, this is a company that I've wanted to work for since um, even before I went to university and studied chemistry. I've, being a nurse science and conservation orientated person, um, yeah, this would be a great company to work for. Job came up, let's do it, let's sell up and um, move back home again and yeah, haven't regretted it a day since. What are the main differences of audiences between Australia and New Zealand? Um, to be honest with you, I couldn't really see too much difference. Um, cause, yeah, well, but then to be fair, I only really worked in one major centre in Australia, which is Newcastle. I, I've only ever done one show in Sydney, and that was in 2014, after I'd moved back to New Zealand, I did one show in a town called Wyong, um, down on the central coast of uh, New South Wales. But um, yeah, from what I can remember from my time in Newcastle, I mean, the audiences were still reasonably young, family-orientated um, shows, a um, little bit of... Um, niggle from some of the more mature um, members of the audience, but well, yeah, still generally pretty similar. Um, and yeah, we were pulling similar crowd levels. I think the most that we ever pulled was, I think, 250 people to the big annual, um, what was called Clean Slate shows um, in May of each year. And um, yeah, either the Hamilton RSL or the um, Cardiff Panthers Club. Um, so yeah, audiences yeah, still yeah, pretty similar, so it's just the accents really, they were different and uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, really I'm not being teased from my accent over here like I was over there because I'm, I'm Chris here but I'm crust <laughs> to all my friends over there, so yeah, yeah it's all good fun. Nice. Yeah. Um, it, it just, yeah, working with all these different promotions as I said earlier, just 10 promotions um, from up in Northland all the way down to Invercargill um, yeah, just over the past um, four or five years it's just been, been a great experience working for all the different people around there um, yeah originally kicked off when I moved back working for um, NZWPW um, got in touch with, touch with Martin Sterling and he was keen for me to come down and um, do some shows for him and uh, so yeah, first show went down to um, Petoni to the Hetoa Gym, which was um, a bit of a shock to the system. And this um, little um, dang little pl uh, old warehouse um, next to the railway line. But um, yeah, it was a good starting point. Um, my real goal when I first came back was to work for Kiwi Pro Wrestling KPW, and I tried a couple of times to um, people um, like Mark Williamson, who was um, a manager over in Australia, he put me on to a guy named um, Slate Mercer, um, who was, as most people now know, has gone on to good things. Um, he put me on to him and I tried, um, you know, got in touch with Slate, who I'd worked with a couple of times um, in Newcastle, who was living up in Brisbane at the time. And, um, yeah, he said he'd get on to KBW um, about me, but never heard anything back. So, um, yeah, fast forward back to um, 2012, 
and um, still trying to get in touch through people. I thought, stuff it, they'll just take the ball by the horns, wrote a letter of all things, not an email or a text message, I wrote a letter to Kiwi Pro Wrestling and um, yeah, shortly afterwards um, got a um, text message from a guy named um, Robert Eden, um, aka Charlie Roberts, said you want to come down and um, referee for us um, down at the, well, I think it was the Lower Hutt Cosmopolitan Club um, for their Cosy Carnage show. I said, yep, yep, I'm there and went down there, got introduced all the people around there and um, yeah, yeah, started a good um, working relationship with um, with Rob. It's um, last to this day. Um, yeah, later on, yeah, was, no, no, I tell a lie. The first show actually was the um, Bay Wrestle Fest up in Tauranga. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they did a day show and then they did an evening show, and that was my first introduction. And um, yeah, the um, yeah, well, one of my fondest memories from my career as you know, during the semi-main event it was um, Charlie Roberts and um, Steve, Steve Masters is it? Yeah, um, yeah um, the original Rodeo Drive against um, friggin uh, H-Flame and uh, damn it, Lazarus Vault and um, I took um, Lazarus Vault's um, uh, missile drop kick that laid me out and uh, which enabled the dusty finish and me to crawl in one two three and Rodeo Driver your new um, KPW Tag Team Champion so yeah that was a great moment for me and then which followed yeah, the Cosy Carnage show and then the Halloween Hell show which turned out to be KPW's um, final show um, it was surely yeah it was at the Bay Wrestle Fest that I first met um, Stacy Stewart, um, aka JPE, and um, yeah, she contacted me later on down the track to come and uh, referee for her at uh, Maniacs United when they first started running shows. Um, yeah, they had a couple of um, sessions um, with them, um, stopping um, for whatever reason, and uh, yeah. Um, got back to them for their recent show up at Mogotoroto in front of um, 200, nearly 300 people, and yeah, still get along great with the um, the Maniacs crowd. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was in later, yeah, through the last um, KBW show that I touched base with um, uh, Mr. Raf Guts and Roddy Gunn, and um, started. Yeah, working for yeah, doing a couple of shows for um, Southern Championship Wrestling down in Blenheim, and um, yeah, a couple of shows down there before um, I guess they're in hiatus. Um, I don't think they've officially closed doors. Um, right, um, there was the short-lived um, independent wrestling initiative up in um, Whangarei, working for um, for Bolter and the Young Lions up there. Um, had a couple of good shows working for them. Shame that um, business has closed up. But I'm um, yeah, hoping now that Bolter's back on the scene that could kick off again. Um, we've got um, Pro Wrestling Entertainment working for Big Tom and Tank. Um, and yeah, a couple of good shows for them down in Morrinsville. Um, nice solid ring similar to what we used to work with over in Australia. It's got the beams going all the way across. Make a good solid bang with no um, piston in the middle. So yeah, yeah, good crowd to work with. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, who else? Um, yeah, of course, um, yeah, probably the biggest one that I've enjoyed working for so far is um, working for um, Mark and Troy down at uh, Southern Pro Wrestling down in Invercargill and um, Dunedin. Had some really top caliber shows down there and I'm very, very disappointed that I can't make the July show with um, oh, what's his name coming over for it. What's his name? Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay, yeah, that think, uh, would have been a phenomenal, yeah, I don't know who he's facing, but either way, it would have been a phenomenal match. And there's also, is it B. Priestley is coming over to face Ashley Spencer. That's right, yeah. I think the South Pacific yeah. Power couple are coming as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that would have been a phenomenal show yeah. um, for the Sun and Rumble, and yeah, I'm devastated, but yeah, B wish them all the best, and um, yeah, had yeah, about three or four good shows with them. They were top draw, electric crowds, especially in the cargo. I really, really enjoyed working there. Um, yeah, Ultimate Championship Wrestling, and did their um, debut show, um, the live by pay-per-view. And um, yeah, just the production value, just stratospheric compared to other promotions. 
um, that I've ever worked for, but then of course they've got the backing that they can do that. So um, yeah, looking forward to good things um, from, um, from Matt on that front. Um, finally, um, oh yes, last but by no means least, Impact Pro Wrestling, the one that I've wanted hardest to work for, but they've always been the most reluctant to take me on board. Um, it took me about three or four years to um, wear um, Dan Burnell down to um, give me an opportunity, um, despite us saying that um, I needed to be up to um, their standards. But I um, yeah, thought that my um, training, Lance Storm, spoke for itself. But um, yeah, finally got that opportunity at uh, the Wellington Armageddon Expo in 2000 and, what was it, 2014 or 2015. And um, yeah, went down and um, showed them what they have. And um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dan, um, jokingly saying that Rinsai that I was the worst villain ever, <laughs> but said that with a big grin on his face, and yeah, I gave him a wink back afterwards. So yeah, worked with a lot of their talent um, for other promotions since then, and um, yeah, yeah, those guys have good not knowledge of what I can do, and yeah, I certainly respect the hell out of them, and yeah, just disappointed that they never needed me for their shows up in Auckland, it's just at the Armageddon, so but hey, what can you do, but yeah, respect the hell out of those guys, and um, certainly proud of the likes of um, Travis Banks and Johnny Idol, um, they've gone on to big things overseas, so um, yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of working with them, so yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, working for the Hughes Academy of Pro Wrestling, this has pretty much become my home um, here in New Zealand. Um, after SWA was my home in Australia. So, um, yeah, yeah, really enjoyed my time working for Tanya and with Graham and uh, working with the trainees that have gone on board here. They've got really, really big futures in store for them, and I'm proud that I can be along for the ride to help them. Um, in that journey and um, working with some of the top names that have come in to help out every now and again like your Shane Sinclair's, um, your Marcus Cools, uh, your Aaron Henry's, um, yeah so yeah got a good home um, here in Kelston and um, yeah always there whenever they've uh, needed me to be there for you know, shows um, yeah, at the primary schools or at the fairs um, or at, even at the Bummer Slam shows. <laughs> They're always a barrel of laughs, um, yeah, more often than not I'm doing double duty with um, refereeing and announcing, but yeah, happy to do it, it's all part of the great ride um, with professional wrestling, so yeah, let the good times roll. Chris Ferguson, thank you for sitting down with us. Happy to do it.